Hi, I'm Krista Jacobson, headmistress of the Buddha Yikai. Today I'm going to make a video for my vlog, and as a reminder, all my vlog videos are unedited, so if I fumble my words a little bit, stay with me. But, uh, right, today I want to discuss a topic that we had in the Hambu Dojo today, and it was on control. Now, um, I do realize that the majority of martial arts has their own, you know, principles and strategies and philosophies on how to deal with control and how they teach control to their students. The majority of martial arts uh, that people practice tends to teach some form of control in a negative or violent or aggressive situation and to control your mind and body in that particular, you know, arena. Um, it also teaches a a vast number of other forms of control in different situations and different elements but usually that's the first element uh, in this this you know this negative aggressive situation is the first thing that people think about when they think about martial arts control okay however there are other forms of control that I think are very important to talk about and it's not so much controlling your mind and body in a negative aggressive situation of course that's something that every martial artist should practice but there's other forms of control that they should practice as well and that's what this video is going to cover okay now before we begin with this video I think it's important to know where I'm coming from a lot of times you see all these videos on the internet and um, everyone gives you their view and what their stand on certain topics and all this kind of stuff and the reality of the situation is if you don't realize um, if you don't realize where they're coming from or where they're at from like a moral code perspective, sometimes it's hard to connect to the person. And that doesn't always mean you need to agree with them on their level of, you know, morals. But at least if you know where they're coming from, you can understand what they're saying, okay? So let's start with me just a little bit, okay? For me personally, I practice a religion called Wicca. And um, within that, there's what's called the Wiccan Reed. Inside the Wiccan read, there is a specific um, specific rule or a guideline or a moral code or you know whatever word you want to use to kind of talk about the Wiccan read because there's there's a list of things within the read. But inside that it says, "And it harm none, do what you will." And I live my life by that. Now I know that there are lots of religions that would be like, "Nope." that's a sin and they would check me off right from the start however again everyone has a right to live their life they want I'm not trying to push my belief on you I'm just gonna tell you where I'm coming from because you need to understand where I'm coming from when I say the rest of this video okay and at harm none do what you will what that means is as long as you're not hurting anybody or hurting anything if it makes you happy do it that's how I live my life and um, that's kinda how I um, that's how I kind of decide if I need to step in and have like a conversation with a student if I feel like they're fucking up a little bit <laughs> and they need a little guidance or something like that, right? Um, and it harm none, do what you will. So let's talk about control, right? What we're going to talk about in this section of control is not letting it hinder your martial arts ability, okay? Um, example, you drink too much, you get drunk, you eat too much, you get fat. Da, 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 right? You have to have some form of control against like, you know, physical pleasures um, and indulging in too much of these physical pleasures or it will inhibit your physical ability to do things. So you're going to be overweight. You're going to be out of shape. You're going to have bad health. You know, um, you know, you, you, you have to have a form of control or these physical pleasures that you indulge in does affect your martial arts training. And as a martial artist, you should never let an outside choice, you should never allow yourself to let those choices affect your training. So let's start with that a little bit. Eat too much, you get fat. Of course, every martial artist should know that they need to be at an effective weight. Um, I was a personal trainer for years. One thing that I've said for many years, uh, and I'll say this until I'm done, and this does piss off a lot of people, um, Sorry, it's just the way I am. I don't see how someone can be this martial art master and be 100 pounds overweight. You know, they're so overweight and fat that if their house caught on fire, they wouldn't be able to run their ass out of the front door before having a heart attack. And martial arts teaches us to be able to be effective and efficient with our bodies. That, that is a fact. That's what martial arts teaches us. It doesn't matter what martial art you're using or what you're doing. You're using your body to be efficient as possible within martial arts. And you can't be efficient. You, you can't 
be efficient as possible if you're carrying 50 extra pounds on you. That is not efficient. Now that doesn't mean you can't be a really good fighter. Of course, I know lots of people who are, you know, 50, 60 pounds overweight and they're really good fighters and they can, you know, they can scrap. I'm not saying that's not true. However, what I'm talking about as being an effective martial artist, you're on that constant path of making yourself as efficient as possible. And to do that, you want to be as lean and as possible to be healthy, to be pragmatic in any situation that comes up. You don't want to sit there and, you know, someone jumps you and then your heart rate goes up, your anxiety goes up, the fear goes up, and because you're not in cardiovascular shape, you you end up having a heart attack because you're overweight you can't withstand uh, the situation that you're in so martial art training should help your weight and you should do the things that you need to do from eating certain foods to help be at a healthy weight okay now I will say I was a personal trainer for many years I just got done saying that but I'm not one of those personal trainers that live and die by the BMI chart body mass index I'm really not because the body mass index does, does not take into account many things muscle mass etc etc body type it doesn't so I'm not I'm not one of those people that like live and die by the BMI okay um, but I do think that you know there's a, there is this thing called being healthy and I think every martial artist should strive to be healthy and if you're not healthy then you need to be healthy. I think that, and I'm not talking about healthy in the realm of like medical problems. I'm talking about healthy as like a body fat percentage and stuff like that. That's what I'm talking about. So from that perspective, don't go to martial arts and be like, I'm going to be a martial arts master. And then knowing that, eat a shit ton of food and have your all these physical pleasures and all the food that you like to eat hinder your ability in the martial arts. Don't fall to that. Be stronger than that. Show control. You know, everything is okay in moderation. You know, same thing with alcohol. You drink too much, you get drunk. I know that there are people that um, they have a beer every single night for supper. They have a glass of wine every single night for supper. And that's perfectly well and good. Some people can have a beer every single night for supper and they are perfectly fine. For me, if I had a beer every night for supper, I'd be overweight, it would affect my martial arts training, it's too many empty calories for me, and it wouldn't work for me. But again, everyone's body's different. Everyone has a different level of efficiency. Everyone has a different level of where they want to be. Some people want to be way up here, and some people are just okay right here. So, you know, everyone has their own goals, everyone has their own where they want to be. But for me personally, I couldn't uh, have a, a beer every single night or a glass of wine every single night and be where I'm at. Because for me, that would be too many empty calories, and um, I just couldn't do it. Now, I am, you know, uh, I'm not 40 yet, but I'm damn near 40 years old, a few months away. And um, to be, you know, as you guys go through my Facebook page, and if you guys are Buddha Roo students and supporters, you guys are obviously on my Facebook page. But um, what you guys will see is, like, you'll scroll on my Facebook page. You guys have little smartphones. You know, you're scrolling down, and you're like, you know, there, you know there's Christo with her freaking, you know, bra and panties showing off her tits and ass or my stomach or I'm showing off my six pack and things like that. I'll not really sit six pack, but I have flat abs and I have ab definition and, and I show off my muscle definition in a lot of the pictures and stuff. Now that's that goes twofold. For me personally, I use social media to attract new students, to attract people to buy my books, to buy my DVDs. Uh, to maybe enroll in the online university, to um, purchase products in my Ninjutsu Superstore. So it's not like I use my social media strictly for I'm teaching Budoru Ninjutsu. No, I use my social media to do everything that I do on the internet, which is a variety of different stuff, all kind of stemming towards Ninjutsu or martial arts, but it has different angles in it. Okay, so when people are on their smartphone, they're scrolling down and they see me standing there and I'm doing a selfie with my bra and panties on and I'm showing my abs. What people will do, most people, they're and they stop and they'll look. Well, then right underneath that is an ad for a book. And it brings people to my page and it brings interest to the page. Now, that's one hand. You're going to get that person. And hopefully that person that does that buys my books, buys my DVDs, and etc., etc. That's great. They don't have to be students. They can just buy my books and DVDs. And I'm quite happy with that, actually. Um, then there's the other side. I'm going to have students flip through there, and they're going to see me in my bra and panties showing off my abs. And the first thing those people need to think is, son of a bitch, she's a few months away from being 40 years old, and she's in that shape. 
and I'm not. Because if I can do it, there's no reason why you guys can't do it. There's no reason why you guys can't do it. If I can do it, you can do it. You know? And that's what I mean. It's, it's like I, I put them up there as a two-fold thing so people can see that, you know, you're scrolling through. And it's like, oh, what's that? And they click it, and then they'll say, oh, there's an ad for a book, and, you know, that kind of thing. And it spurs interest. And then they buy books. They buy DVDs. Don't even have to be students. Buy DVDs, buy books. It's great. However, my students should see that and be like, the headmistress of the school keeps herself in seriously good physical shape. I need to do the same thing. That's what I'm that's what I'm talking about. Don't do something that would hinder your ability in the martial arts. I do this because I want to make sure that everyone knows that I'm in good shape and I train to be as the most effective and efficient as possible within these arts. However, there are other people who clearly don't follow that same again moral compass. There are people who firmly believe they can be 80 pounds overweight and be a martial art master. That's what I'm talking about when I say everyone has their own rules to live by. I feel that that's incorrect. I feel that you need to show more control and to make yourself the best you could possibly make yourself. And um, everyone, and as a martial artist, I think that's something that we should strive for. You know, no one's perfect. No one's perfect. I make just as many mistakes as everybody else. It's not like I'm perfect in any way at all, and I'm not trying to sit here and say that I'm perfect and be like me. No, I'm not. I'm saying that everyone should have an idea of who they are, what their limits are, and then have a good grip of control. Don't let those things inhibit your training or your personal life. Now, for me, again, I talk about the idea of and it harm none, do what you will. If it doesn't hurt anybody or you're not hurting anything, I say go for it. And that's what I mean. There are some people who they can have a beer every single night. It doesn't affect their lifestyle. It doesn't affect their family. And it doesn't affect their ability in the martial arts. They're good with it. For me, that would affect my ability in the martial arts. Too many empty calories for me. So that's what I'm saying. Everyone has a limit and everyone needs to know their limit. But if you know you are not efficient, if you know you can make yourself better, why are you not doing it? Why are you not making yourself the best you can possibly be? That's really the question, isn't it? That's the, that's the million dollar question. So this video here was more of a the idea of making sure that you guys kind of put your focus on something that's a little bit more um, real. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, when it comes down to you know, martial arts, hand-to-hand -hand combat, whatever you guys want to do, you know, sport, MMA, kickboxing, whatever martial arts you guys choose. At the end of the day, you guys are going to have to be able to perform at a very high, intense, violent situation. And the less efficient your body is, the, the more out of shape it is, all this kind of stuff, the less efficient you're going to be in that situation. No matter what, it doesn't matter. I, am, I understand there's martial arts skills. I get that. But there's also a level of efficiency, and you guys are training to make your body the most efficient weapon that you can, and your body is the weapon. So you would want your body to be as efficient as possible. If I had, if I had a few guns in here, right? I have a gun over here, and the gun has a whole bunch of rust all over it, and I never took care of it. On one hand, it's a gun. No one denies the um, how well a gun can be effective in a violent situation. I don't think anyone would disagree that a gun can be a very useful tool in a violent situation. However, if that gun is rusted up and not taken care of, that gun is not a useful tool in a violent situation. Your body works the same way. If your body is not taken care of, it doesn't matter what martial arts you're studying, it's not going to be effective in a violent situation. So you guys as martial artists, doesn't matter what martial arts you guys choose, you need to make sure that you train your bodies to be as efficient and effective as possible. Thank you guys very much for watching my video. If you guys have any questions, stick it in the comment section below. And uh, I will try to get to it. If you guys hit me with all this, you know, I'm 100 pounds overweight, blah, 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 and 
I drink 12 pack of beer today and blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. You missed the point of the video. Don't miss the point of the video. That's what I'm saying. Okay. There was a point. Hopefully you guys understood the point. You need to show more control and you need to dedicate yourself to what's the most important part towards martial arts training. Think about it. So until next time, take care, be safe. And uh, good luck in your journey with Buddha. Bye.